Uh, aloha everybody, I'm Malia Nobriga Oliveira and I'm tuning in from Hanapepe, Kauai. Um, on behalf of Hawaii Nui Akea, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge, we're always happy to be a partner with Kanayo Kana and be a host here um, on Lei Anue Nui. Um, yeah, so that's me and I'm going to turn it over to, I see in one of our cameras here, Auntie Daviana and Uncle Mac, if you guys can say aloha and a short introduction about yourself and your Aina. Aloha, I'm Uncle Mac. I come Aina to Molokai. Um, Oli Hua, Hawaiian Homestead, Palao Moku. Awesome. Aloha, Uncle. Aloha. Uh, aloha, Kako. Daviana, Pomoika'i, McGregor. Um, I live in Ho'olehua with my partner, Dr. Uh, Emma Lui, and Mac is my neighbor. And Mac and Emma and I with, with Kanoho Ailuku and all of the, our community, we've been working to get a community-based subsistence fishing management area, which was Mac's idea, to have it for Mo'omomi. Uh, for well, over 25 years now. Aloha, Anake. Um, kanoho. Aloha. Uh, well, kanoho Wailuku, Molokai, Kuhone Hanau. Um, my name is Kanoho Wailuku Helm. Um, I'm from Molokai. Uh, I live in the Holehua homestead area. Uh, I've been uh, honored and grateful. I, I got to work with Uncle Mac for a good amount of years. Uh, she, I think about now, maybe about 20 years already, um, maybe a little over that, uh, working towards, you know, kind of like what, what we presented today and, um, uh, and to continue uh, what we're trying to do to, to take care of our place down in the morning. So, uh, thanks for to be here and mahalo for having us. Awesome. Mahalo. Keani hiki keho olauna. Aloha mai kako, aloha malia, mahalo for uh, inviting us to kuka with you this morning and um, aloha everyone out there, mahalo for tuning in and uh, listening. Uh, I am Kiani Rollins Fernandez, uh, born and raised Molokai and uh, I am the council member for um, Maui County uh, representing Molokai uh, and the county at wide. Um, and I've been uh, waiting for this uh, moment to have this hearing on the CBSFA for years, not, not nearly as long as um, Uncle Mac, Kanoho, and Tidevi, you know, all of um, the champions. And so I'm happy to lend my support to see this through um, for our next generation. Mahalo. Awesome. I'm just really pleased to, I, I wish I could say we're all in the same room and, you know, able to puliki and say aloha, but I feel like I'm in the same room with you guys and sending our aloha from Kauai, so from the other side of the pai aina all the way to you guys in Molokai. Um, and, you know, all our friends from Miloli'i and Kauai, I see them all coming on and they're saying, how's it? Uncle Mac, and you know, that's Billy and Lila and all our ohana, uh, lay them. So yeah, let's get started. I know we have some slides to show. So our kako'o for hui malama o mo'omomi. I think, are we gonna go there or yeah, I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys. Ready. Okay. This I go first. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, morning. Coming from Molokai, all our people out in the uh, in the mainland or wherever in the world. Um, we could talk about CBSFA, something that you know a lot of people question. Uh, even Molokai people, they ask me, "Oh, what is that?" So I just gonna clear the air for everybody to know that CBSFA the management area that um, we thought that should be included rather than the state putting some kind of management area on us to um, do things their way. So we wanted to be included in this whole process. 
uh, the CBCP process. And so we came up with that idea that hey, community-based subsistence fishing area for the people, where the people can have input into rulemaking and how we manage our own place. I think that is the, pretty much the, the meat of the whole thing. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the CBSFA. Um, one of the things that I like to point out is that the S in a CBSFA means subsistence. And uh, at some point, the state took the S out of the CBSFA. And I never liked the idea. I said, this is what this whole thing is about. It's about feeding our people subsistence, yeah? So we need to be firm on that. Um, and I can move forward without that. This is part of the process that we started with. And this is what we like have it to be. So the, the TBSFA is pretty much um, traditional and customary practices. Um, I'm going to read over here the purpose. So the purpose of the CBSFA is to reaffirm and protect fishing practices customarily and traditionally exercised for purposes of native Hawaiian subsistence culture and religion. Yeah. Um, and Deviana came up with the meaning for subsistence. So throughout this process, we, you know, we work really hard. The governor at uh, the governor Whitehead's administration that appointed people to look at subsistence on Molokai and how are we going to be included in this whole thing um, as far as our economy go? So throughout the whole thing, we, we found out that subsistence is part of our economy where people can pretty much subsist, you know, and take care of their families that way. Whereas on our islands, they, everybody got to go work. And later on, we'll come back to that. Um, but the subsistence also gives us that edge on kind of like not just taking care of our resources, but giving, giving something back, giving something back to what was taken away from us. So we like teach our, our kids, our um, future generations, about what we're doing and um, all the stuff that we can recapture and hopefully they can, they can use that in their lives so that we don't need struggle. And right now we get the pandemic, you know, the pandemic when it caused plenty of care for many people, no more job. Um, we cannot feed the families, you know, get, get hard time. I know that. So for us, a Molokai, for, for myself, I can speak. Um, I think not bother me at all. I just, just normal, you know? I mean, this is the way I live in. Nothing will change. Still taking care of my family the way we always did. And um, no more pressure. Okay? My, my, my family is all good. But I feel for the families that getting hard time. And part of that is what we don't realize in a traditional way, you know, we're born with kuleana, yeah? So that kuleana, we kind of misinterpret at times. Some people think, oh, when they wake up in the morning, they jump in the car, they're going to take care of kuleana in the office. That's not kuleana that. Kuleana no involve money. Kuleana is something that you exercise for your benefit and your family's benefit so that everybody can gain you know, from what you do. Like in my family, my kuleana was clean the yard, feed the animals, take care of plants, go fishing, assist them take care of the house, 
the Miliki when I go in the house, you know, they cook, they take it inside bar. Mm -hmm. So we get that kind of stuff going on in a social structure, in a family. So, and today people, they misinterpret Kuliana. So the way I was born with that was that we have a purpose in life, yeah? And the Hawaiians call them Kuliana. So we look at that today with the pandemic, right? What is the people is Kuliana the one no more job now? Yeah. They get Kuliana, but they just didn't push them on the side. They gotta go retrieve all that. Retrieve that Kuliana, and it can be happy just like me, you know, or us. That when hang on to that Kuliana, and we still can yeah. survive. So, I don't like take up too much time for a lot of guys, so. <laughs> you know, they get plenty of interesting stuff for say too. So, um, <laughs> Aloha kako. We're here at Molokai Land Trust Operations Center in Kuala Pu'u on Molokai. Uh, you can see that in Kanoho's screen. And um, I've been working with Mac on this since um, I was part of uh, the governor's Molokai subsistence task force team. Um, myself and uh, John Matsuoka and Luciana Minerbi with and also Maria Kurigawa, we worked on uh, surveying how much subsistence is important to people here on Molokai. And we found out that people said 28% uh, of their diet comes from subsistence fishing, gathering, planting, uh, and hunting. And for, for the Native Hawaiians on Molokai, which we make up 70% of the island, 35% of our diet comes from subsistence. And for us here in Holehua, the main area that uh, we go is from Ilio Point to uh, Nihoa. And you can see that on the northwest part of the island in the map. And you can see that how, how much subsistence activities was going on in 94. But even then, people like Uncle Mac and other kukuna at the time, Uncle Bill Wallace and um, Wei Li was saying that, you know, the, it's not as plentiful as used to be growing up. And so um, the community, uh, the Momomi community came up with this idea, why don't we set up a community-based subsistence fishing area for, for the community? And the problem at the time was DLNR, they only have fishing management area and most fishing management areas, you cannot fish. But we, we wanted to control, especially commercial take, but allow us to continue fishing. And you know, a lot of the science at that time was saying, no, you cannot have both management and subsistence. They don't exist together. If you wanna have a fishing management area, you gotta have no take. But this is a new idea that came from the community, not from DLNR, it came from the community. And the community said, no, we can, we, our generations, our ancestors taught us how we can still fish but, but fish with sustainable yield. We can still fish, but still have abundance. And that's what this is about. And, and, and Mac and Kanoho and others here in our community have been showing that we can continue to fish uh, and get our resources, um, but still manage so that it's sustainable. But you know, why do we need this kind of designation is because commercial. And if you have commercial, that, that, that takes the whole, uh, uh, thing out of the equation. And so, you know, there's a lot of um, decline in the resources. So we felt it's important to, to have some rules that the community can come up with, but we need the DLNR to control the commercial take. And that's why this community-based subsistence fishing area is important. And it's taken on uh, interest from other communities. So you have Haena on Kauai, and they were the first one to go the whole route. And then you have Bilolii coming up and Kipahulu coming up. And on Maui, there's a, there's a group too, and Lanai. So we have a lot of interest now. Every, a lot of people are saying, yeah, let's go back to our Hawaiian way to manage. Not have the DLNR rules, which is one size fit all, but have community manage, say, when, what, what needs to be coupled one time? No need to make a law to do that. We can do it ourselves. But let's manage it together as a community, but let DLNR control the commercial. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, we, 
talk about some history and then kind of fast forward to the present and um, you know what what the proposal is and what the package is, but um, and what the rules are. But you know, I just wanted to just give a little uh, something as to why 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 we're we creating rules. Um, David touched a little bit about that. Uh, usually, you make rules because get problems. Rules are for solution of problems. Yeah? And so, what we did was identify, uh, find our baseline, identify you know the different species that we depend on for subsistence use, and then pick the measurement and and then look at where the problem is at. Um, and we identified uh, seven different species uh, where we, it looks like we get, we get some problems, we get the, some diminishing numbers. Um, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason why we get numbers diminishing on certain species. Uh, one, of, one of the big things is uh, commercial fishing. Another is sport fishing. Um, and that's not, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our people, we like to blame the outside islands, you know, and Sometimes the outside islands come and they take one time, they take planning one time. And, um, and that's not good, but it's also us. You know, we, 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 uh, sometimes we take too much too. So um, some of those species, and I'm gonna go over them kind of quickly. Um, let's get some more things to cover. Um, one is the uhu. Uh, the uhu is a sought after fish. And when I, when I was growing up, I fortunate enough to uh, go diving as, as, a, as a young man. Um, as a young boy with some really good divers, uh, my dad, my uncles, you know, all over the island. And I grew up in a time where you could go diving for a uhu and you could, you could catch it with a tree prong and you, you could catch it outside of the hole, outside of the puka. Um, the habit of this fish is usually to come out of the puka and swim into the puka and then give a turn to you and then you can catch it with a tree prong, you can poke it with a tree prong. Um, and then I got to see the change where the spear gun started to come and um, other more um, better technology uh, came out to catch the uhu. And, and then we started to see a decline in the uhu. Um, it's pretty uh, easy fish to catch. And for spot fishermen, uh, you see that they target a lot of the blue uhus, the uhu uli uli. And the reason is it's just probably the, it's, it's the dominant of the school. Uh, it's the male, and the, the male to female ratio is about one to five, one to ten. Um, so people start to target the male, and without the male, um, uh, they can uh, fertilize the heron. So we got to see uh, some of that population diminish, and hence uh, we put a rule on that. Um, and that's a bag limit of two per day, um, and plus a couple between April to June, uh, which is its breeding season. Um, so this, this slide here is uh, uh, from uh, Lakia put this together, uh, from Exxon, and it was done for the month of April. And this is the couple for April, because uh, the Uhu and the Kole uh, have couple which they be spawning during that time. Can we move to the next slide, I think. But um, can you go back? Because I think we could still take, what's showing is you can still take two uhu and 20 kole a day. Yeah, but, but not during that the couple time. And then the that couple time, time is able to do. Yeah. So here, yeah, this picture here. So during the month of April, picture we back in the month of April, you cannot take the, the uhu and the kole. But these fish are available to take, you know, and a whole lot more of uh, ocean resources and species. Um, get umu, moi, yeah, so there you go. Um, just uh, abundant amount of species. And you know, this is tradition. Tradition is when the fish is in kapu, they spawn in, you leave them alone. So obviously they make more, uh, more fish for the next time and the next time. And then you get abundance, you get overflow. And there's still a lot of other species. These are just the ones that we're saying has been declining. Yeah, and and so, so if you move to present time, right now we're in August, um, and 
right now uh, we're on the tail end of the, the moi, uh, the breeding season of the moi. Um, come September, uh, October, you know, they're going to be, come September, they're going to be finishing off already and the season is open by then. Um, so during this time, if you turn it down in Momomi, um, you should be looking at a hole or any nui, you know, uh, other different fish species that we can take during this time, which are plentiful. And we live along the moi until September. Plenty, plenty to pop up, plenty to eat. So is the couple that we have here, is it the same as statewide or is it uh, just for more moment time? Is it addition? Are these couple periods statewide or particular? Some of the couple is um, just for more moment. The state, the state, um, they adopted a lot of the original Hawaiian couple which was about the spawning time. So I think maybe some of this stuff that we're doing, the, you know, the traditional practice of, you know, kapu the, the fish when it's spawning. Some of this, the state, the state got to learn from us. <laughs> we welcome them for come and learn because we, we get the information, we get the knowledge, we get, the, we get everything that they, they need so they can come. But, um, yeah, don't no, no try to push us on the side like we don't know nothing. Because you'd be surprised the amount of stuff that we know about the fish, the limo, the everything that live in the ocean. That's, that's like, that's our kuleana. Yeah? We do this all the time. And we do this because that's our food too. Yeah? We eat from the ocean. So we malama the ocean. All our stuff that we take, we like make sure we know how the thing will be replaced. So it's really important to have, have knowledge of these cycles as they happen. So yeah, some stuff might be coupled at a, at a certain time, but other species gonna be open. Yeah. So it's not like we're gonna couple the whole thing and it's completely shut down. We're always gonna have stuff for eat. There's no problem. I mean, I always tell people, you know, if anybody can find a better plan than what we have for more mommy, I'd be happy to sit down and have a discussion and look at all the good points and we can add all this stuff in. But every time we meet, people walk out of the meeting, they don't like participate, but then they complain. So this is like the opportunity, the last opportunity for everybody, you know, come together. We still can do this. It's not, it's not like one done deal. We can, we can change things around, but Make sure the thing makes sense. Make sure you did your studies. Like me and Kano and the rest of the boys that work with us, we put in a lot of hours in that ocean to confirm and to justify what we're doing over here. It's not something that we like make up to stop people from doing. This is something that we need. We need to do. So also in this picture, you can see Kava'aloa Bay. And can you tell us, Uncle, why Kava'aloa Bay is special and, and what you think needs to be done to protect it as well? Yeah, so when I was growing up, we never used to fish in there. Uh, well, as far as jumping in the water, yeah. Everybody fish from shore, to the pollen and stuff like that. Um, Picopi, Piglimo, off on the shoreline. So some of the older people, I, when I used to talk with them, they say, oh, they place couple because if you, you look on the shoreline itself, you can see all the baby fish. Um, <laughs> you know, came to a point where I never had the baby fish, so it's kind of like scratching my head and where the baby fish, you know, they're not there. So as time went on, I see sometimes get, sometimes no more. But then I started to see one pattern and just about when a when a fish started spawning, you would see the baby ones, they come in. So it's, it's the nursery, they're gonna come in there because it feels safe. There's everything that they need in there to survive. And old people knew that. So even some of the archeological um, digs that we did down there with the archeologists, you know, say that you know, all these people that live there, they, 
they knew the place was a, was a nursery. And we like to treat them that way. Nowadays, people go down there and they're diving in the water, and naturally, the fish can get scared, and they're going to run away. And we don't like that. We like the, people, the fish come back in that place where they belong, and they can feel safe. Just like Hanama Bay, yeah? You know about other fish, they're going to stay. They're going to come back. So we like to treat our bay down there the way it should be treated. Yeah, so um, maybe Kiani could share with us what some of her generation thinks about these rules and this community-based subsistence fishing area. Hello, Auntie Davy. So um, I think, you know, what Uncle Mac shares um, and what Kanoho and Auntie Davy is sharing um, is really important. So for the next generation, uh, you know, protecting what we have now and uh, standing not from a, a standpoint of scarcity, but of how can we ho'omomona our resources? How can we grow it and make sure that my children, my children's children, and all of our next generations, seven generations from now, will have uh, resources left in these areas that are significant to um, our, our community and our culture. And um, so the first point is that uh, we need to protect what resources we have now. As Kanoho uh, was saying earlier, you know, back, back then there, there was such an abundance. And um, after years of documenting and recording, and, you know, and Kanoho and Uncle Max said this, that they helped to gather this data themselves. So they know, they've seen it with their own eyes. Um, the depleting and diminishing of the populations of these vulnerable species. So to make sure that, uh, you know, our generation today and generation seven, seven generations from now will have resources. Um, the second point is that without these resources, we won't be able to pass on the kind of ike uh, that our kupuna shared with us. Um, and, you know, it, that's exactly it, you know, um, raising our children as our kupuna were raised by their kupuna in how to gather, in um, what areas should be protected because they're nurseries, for example, um, like kava'aloa. So that type of generational ike is really important to also protect. That's a, a you know, a really important resource sometimes that is overlooked as well. That being having the species there makes it possible for us to pass on this ike. Um, we see, for example, limu ele ele is it's hard to come by now. And in order to teach your next generation, your children, how to gather limu ele ele without there being any limu ele ele is frankly impossible. If there isn't the resource uh, to, to teach. So it, the resources that we're talking about is not just you know, in the ocean, on the shoreline, but also our ike kupuna uh, that needs to be protected. And I wanted to add, so as a council member, as a legislator, um, I know there's a, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. And so uh, it's really important to see what is in black and white. What is the letter of the law that is being proposed? Um, and so in this proposal in um, Hawaii Revised, the proposed Hawaii Revised um, HAR, Hawaii Administrative Rules 13-60.9-1, section three, the purpose, is to recognize and protect customary and traditional native Hawaiian fishing practices that are exercised for subsistence, cultural, and religious purposes in the area. And uh, section or HAR uh, section 13-60.9-4 permitted and prohibited activities. Nothing in this chapter shall be construed as abridging traditional and customary native Hawaiian rights or as allowing within the Mo'omomi community-based 
subsistence fishery area, any activity or fishing gear otherwise prohibited by law or rules adapted uh, by the department. So th this would not um, abridge or diminish the uh, traditional and customary gathering practices in the area. As Auntie Davy uh, was saying that um, the CBSFA, when it was created, was so brilliant um, because prior to uh, this legislation, there, there was only a no-take uh, type of management. So you would have like a Hanauma Bay. And that doesn't work for our people. It doesn't work for our community. Um, subsistence is, is, is vital, it, you know, especially on Molokai. Uh, so management allowing um, subsistence it is, is the CBSFA. Uh, it allows for us to manage without there being an all out, no take type of regulation because that's not what this is. Um, and it's really important to understand what this CBSFA is and what it's not. And it's not a no take. This is not, we're not creating a Hanauma Bay. We're, this is the way to protect subsistence gathering, but prohibit commercial take. And so, so that we can protect the resources for the next generation. The proposed rules, as Kanoho went over them, um, protects what they, their, ga their gathered data says is the most vulnerable species. And so these are the species that need to be protected. Um, and if we can um, have up on the screen what would be allowed for someone to uh, take per day under these rules. And so here you have two uhu, you know, two lobster, two kumu, you have 20 kole, um, and I forget how many moi, is it um, 20 moi? Um, and, the, and these are only the, the vulnerable species. We're not talking about kala, enenue, akule, um, which you, you can take much more. So if you think on this screen here where it's showing that it, is this enough for one person to take home to feed their family of four or five? Um, I, I mean, for my family, I think this is enough. In fact, this, this would be enough for me to also share with my extended ohana. And the way that we're taught is you, you never dive alone, right? For your own protection. And so we're talking about at least, you know, uh, one other person going with you to gather. And so you multiply what you see on the screen here by two, right? And it, it, I, that, that should be enough. Um, you know, we're taught to only take enough for you to consume and enough for you to share. Um, and, you know, and we're taught to not take more than that. And so um, some of that misconception of, of whether, um, families or divers, you know, will be able to go and gather enough to take home to feed their family. And, and I say this is, this is enough. Um, and this CBSFA uh, rules, this proposal is a type of adaptive management. And so um, what, what we mean when we say adaptive management is that, okay, we identify these species as the most vulnerable species. And when we see that their population is coming back, they're flourishing, they're doing well, then we take the couple off of them because their, 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 their species is doing well and is enough for us to not put that type of protection. And perhaps if there's another species now that is vulnerable, we could add that species or not. But that's the style of adaptive management that this CBSFA rules um, proposes. And I, oh, go ahead, Auntie Davy. I wanted to comment on what you just said too. Yeah, I just want to chime in. Um, because, uh, talking about it. Oh, 
Auntie Davy, you gotta turn on your mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. So I give an example, sort of adaptive management. Um, and so we have the cole, uh, and we have a bag limit of 20 per day. Um, you know, just to go back a little bit, cole is a fish that is very sought after uh, for more people. Um, well, I would say about 10 years ago and, and 20 years ago, you would always see it at Luau's, you know, only cole on the line for fry fish um, and not much any other fish, mostly cole. Um, you see it at events being sold uh, to make fundraisers and whatnot. And um, so eventually the, the population went low on the cole. And you no. Know, for, for, for reason of the fish being a delicious fish, yeah. And another reason is because of the habits of the fish, it's, 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 it's sort of a clumsy fish if you, if you dive in. It, it swims kind of really slow and it kind of comes up to the spear and um, you know, it's easy to, easy to catch. But what we've seen throughout time is as we take in the cole, we remove the cole, we had other fish come into that habitat, uh, such as the micro, the micro equal, um, and then uh, we had more pakukui, you know, other surgeon fish that are good eating fish, but they start to uh, take over and overwhelm the habitat. Now what happens there is, if the kole is, is on a low number, and the other fish of the same species are of a higher number, they start to dominate the habitat. And so it's harder for the kole to come back. But with this system here, and we learn how to eat some of the other fish, like the micro, like the pakukui, like the micro eco, um, and we start to take them and, and take more of them and open up the habitat for more of the to come back. And then we start to enhance our habitat. Um, so, you know, it's going to take a learning on also how we um, prepare some of these other fish, you know, because there's different ways to cook them. Um, I don't know, I like to make kinilao with the maiko, um, you know, kulehu, some of the other fish. Uh, get other ways where you can eat the other fish and their own. So, and I think we, we have to get ma'a that. Um, uh, and that has to be a part of uh, our practice. Mahalo. You know, I, I wanted to throw a question in because um, I'm seeing an interesting conversation going on on, on Facebook. And um, for example, um, you know, I think some people may be hearing this for the first time. And so for one thing, they're like in full support. They're like, you know, yes, we need to learn from our kupuna from generation to generation. Our ancestors have brought wisdom, knowledge, and to be sustainable. Uh, let's ma malama our kuleana. And then, so then some others, Sandy and others are saying, and I think you guys shared a little bit already, but I'm wondering if we can um, maybe address this a little bit more. They, they're asking, well, why would anyone oppose this? Like, what, what's the big deal? I mean, it's sounding like this is amazing. It's a, it's a subsistence. Um, it's providing for the community, for the generations to come. It's based on that Ike Kupuna, the ancestral knowledge. And they're, they're wondering that, yeah, like, okay, well, why is there so much opposition if that's what's happening and what we're seeing. So I can. Mine is off. Here's your. I can try to answer that. Uh, okay. One mic. Oh, yeah, there we go. Anna, only one mic can be on. So. And then the other one has to be. It worked <laughs> good earlier, Auntie Davy. How you had? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, gotta turn down the volume. On, on one. Yeah, and see, David, turn your volume all the way down. Okay, now let's try and unmute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, we're good. Malia and, oh, okay. Are, are we still? Okay. No, I'll mute it. Yeah. I think while, while we're waiting, I can kind of speak a little bit to some of the pushback that um, I've heard um, as a council member and as a community person. 
Um, so one, one of the things is that, um, one of the misconceptions is that it seems like um, they think the, those that oppose the opposition think that it's, a, it's kind of a top-down um, effort from DLNR. Uh, but really, as Uncle Mac and um, Kano has shared, is that this is community-driven. This is something that um, the Hui Malama Omo Omoni um, requested. Uh, and the CBSFA was, was created by the uh, task force 25 years ago. And that um, this would be an invitation to bring um, DoCare and DLNR um, to Mo'omomi, but really they already have jurisdiction from the high water mark uh, into the ocean up to where Coast Guard has jurisdiction is DLNR's jurisdiction. So they're already um, the, the enforcement of, of these areas. What the CBSFA would do is actually put more enforcement into the hands of the community. And that enforcement really comes in the form of education. Uh, so that if more of our community members understand why uh, these rules are in place, uh, for example, like Uncle Mac was saying, that these times uh, are set as couples so that the, it's, it's the breeding time, right, for, for certain species. Uh, or, you know, not going to Kava'aloa because it's a nursery for baby fish. Um, so when more of our community understands the purpose of these rules is to benefit the community and the resources um, and, the, and, and the life itself there, um, then I think that uh, will serve as enforcement. And I'll um, share the mic uh, with Uncle Matt. I'll go back to the... Okay, all right. Sorry, one more time. Go for it. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> okay, um, to answer the question about, what was the question? <laughs> How come people oppose? How come yeah. people oppose? Yeah, okay. So a lot of it has to do with commercial tape. Um, they're not going to tell you that, but um, yeah, a lot of them involved in selling um, mm -hmm you know, commoditizing our resources. So that's where all that coming from. And if you go to the hearings, like right now you cannot, because you cannot get together. But those, those people that are opposed, you can see them with the commercial group, commercial fishermen. You know, myself, I'm not against commercial fishing, as long as they stay in their own place, where it belong, out in the ocean, I'm fine. Yeah, but when you come and try to take people's food and sell them to them, um, nah, nah, they're, they're not going to work. You know, we already get some stuff that we mentioned on our uh, rules that we allow for commercial take, like a coolie. A coolie is a pelagic fish. They come in short to school. And that is when they it's spawning time too. But anyway, that's allowed for commercial take. The Ta'ape, one of our invasive species that the state brought in a long time ago. Um, yeah, you can take all you like. Take them all, in fact. So that, that's for commercial. So we're not cutting everything out, you know. They, they, it's, it's, it seems like it's unbalanced, but actually what we're doing over here, we're trying to bring back the balance so that we can have enough of everything so that everything can thrive, like kind of what I'm saying, you know, there was an imbalance in the, the surgeon fish population. And the surgeon fish is one of the biggest populated uh, populations in the whole ocean. Yeah, there's so many different surgeon fish. And they need to be balanced out. Some, some are very aggressive. They go in and they eat a lot of the food, a lot of the same food. You know, they overtake the place. So. We gotta be mindful about this kind of stuff. We gotta be Akamai. So, and that's part of what we're trying to create. We're trying to create Akamai Hawaiians. How for doing the Hawaiian way, the Pono way. And uh, uh, we're finding that very hard. Some people don't like give up their ways, you know, from selling fish to gathering just for eat. I had to do that myself. I gotta just for eat. Am I happy? Happy that my kids are happy. 
all my family is happy, all of, all of family that I share with, they are happy. So I see more happiness in sharing and eating from your own icebox. Mahalo, you know, as uh, mahalo for that um, to both to all of you, you know, and I, I'm going to read another comment I'm seeing here on Facebook um, that Jenny just posted saying, it's sad that some in the community value money over future generations having the resources. Um, and it's sad to force folks to have to defend their place and resources from greed. I truly hope all those claiming rights and such really understand with what this means and the implications. So I, I think the message is definitely, um, I feel like our, our, our friends that are joining here today, at least on uh, Le Anue Nui, I think they're hearing our message. And I think, um, yeah, mahalo again for leading the way you guys. And um, I think, I mean, we have a few more minutes to keep going. Um, if there's other mana'o you want to share. Well, the other, the other um, commercial activity that's allowed still is trolling and also the uh, bottom fishing for the seven um, main bottom fish taken. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. There's a guy, a kalkali, a Yeah, because the main concern is the reef fish area, because most people are not um, fishing by boat over here fishing from the ocean and go jump in. And so that's why we want to protect the, the reef fish. And of course the reef fish don't go anywhere. The, the fish like the trolling fish, the bottom fish, they wander. But these fish that most concerned about are the ones that are resident along our shoreline over here and out one mile. And it's based on a traditional, um, the traditional way that Hawaiian managed our, our resources was um, the area from the shore out to the reef, or if there was no reef out to a mile, was always for the people who lived in that area. And people from outside that area don't come and take from that area. So this is a way to protect it, at least from the commercial side of things. Mm. And I see another question here. Um, Specifically, they're saying the kole, but I think in general, like who's taking the kole? Is it the locals on Molokai or is it people coming from across the channel, other commercial fishermen coming from outside and doing this fishing? Everybody. Everybody. Okay. Everybody. Mahalo. Um, you know, I also Hello. wanted to highlight, because um, we usually have a lot of Kumu, a lot of um, teachers that work with, you know, that upcoming generation. And one of our Kumus is Kumu Maile Lauli'i Naki, and she's saying aloha to all of you. And um, she also mentioned that she fully kako and that she also wrote a mele about Mo'omomi. And it's called Eola Mau O Mo'omomi. And, you know, mahalo Kumu Maile Lauli'i for sharing that because that is definitely a way for us to continue the mo'olelo and share um, these, these stories with that next generation To So for all of our kumu out there, I mean, maile lauli'i, maybe you need to share the mele and we can share it with the larger community. And that can be a part of your testimony that maybe you and your students submit. I think that would be a great testimony in itself, you know, where if you, your classroom of Keiki and your community can submit that mele and why? Why it was so important for you to write this mele? I think, um, I don't know, it's giving me chicken skin as I say that. Like, I would love to see that as a testimony being submitted. I think that's a beautiful way to, to, to say why you sub support the CBSFA. And so if any of our haku mele out there or poem, you know, slam poets and all of you want to do something very creative, that's a perfect kind of submission as testimony. And I think we have some slides. Oh, go ahead, Auntie Davy. I see you want to say something. I wanted to uh, talk about how um, you can testify. So the public hearing is being held on um, August 19, and it's from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., and it's going to be on Zoom. And so you can um, 
look, go on the DNR website and put in um, Moomi and the CPSFA, and it has the information about how you can sign up uh, to testify by Zoom. Everybody has three minutes to testify by Zoom. But in addition, you can already send in from now until August 26th written testimony uh, and um, turn it in by email or by mail. And in addition, on every island, uh, there's going to be one place where you could go and testify in person for three minutes. Uh, but it's not like it's going to be a big community gathering at one place because we all know we have to have only 10 per 10 limits. So what they're going to do is say if you're on Molokai, you go to the Kuala Pu Charter School or on Oahu, you go to the BLNR boardroom or on Kauai, the Veterans Center. Uh, and what they're going to do is that you go in one by one and you sit with the hearing officer with your mask on and you give your testimony um, and then come out. But you have to apply for that also to let them know, re register to say you want to um, go and testify in person Wednesday, August 19, from 5.30 to 8.30. And then they'll give you an assigned time to go. Uh, if you forget to do that and you still want to go, the spirit moves you to go show up. If you're on Maui, the DAR office in Kona, the Natural Energy Lab, um, wherever you are, you can still show up, but you got to wait for all the people who registered before you have a turn to uh, testify. So the better way is to, Morpa'a is um, already registered to do it online. Uh, through Zoom between 5.30 and 8.30, or send us a written testimony to the DLNR. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you for all of that. And I see our Kako'o Mo'omomi um, putting all of the links, um, both in the Zoom chat as well as on our Facebook chat. And so, you know, for all of you out there, whether you're watching the live or you're watching a recording of this, Please click on those links and find, find that voice. Um, you know, however, where, wherever you're coming from, we encourage all of you to share your voice in that creative way. Or, and I, I like it that it's being do, done on Zoom because, you know, so many of us, like Molokai and Kauai and all the others, when these hearings happen, a lot of times they're happening on Oahu, and so then we don't have the resources to fly. So I'm hoping that this really sets a precedence for future work as well, so that others like us on all the islands can really be a part of a process like this and, and give our voice and lend our voice. Um, so before maybe I bring up my closing slides, do you guys want to share some last manao? And I think we have a, another slide to share too. Well, I, this is for Momomi, but really why they're having the hearings on every island is because a community-based subsistence fishing area can be on any island if the community wants it. And so they want to, it's, it's kind of a hearing to say, well, should we even have this kind of community-based subsistence fishing kind of area? And, and that's what's at stake here, you know, the, the, the opponents think if they can stop it here at Moomi, they can stop it on every island. So if you believe it's important for your island too, it's really important to come out and support us for this one, because if we can continue along the path Haena has set in getting Puka through, then all the islands can also have this for their areas. Kano? You're good. Uh, I just wanted, oh. Go ahead. No need move. It, the audio is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, Auntie. We're good, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, for any of our people on Molokai uh, watching, um, just wanted to say that uh, and encourage families to continue to go and gather and take care of their wahana. Because, um, you know, overall, that's how we take care of each other. Is, we go holo holo and we share what we have. And um, I just, I love seeing Ohana down there and, you know, families coming together and uh, um, taking care of each other. So I just like to say, um, you know, I, I hope that continues. That 
because that carries on our culture and our traditions. Families coming together. Yeah. Okay, Annie, maybe in your closing mana'o, can you address this question that I'm seeing? Um, and I think it's a good one. Um, because in the role that you play too now, you maybe can shed some light on this to our community. So they're asking like, why, why can everybody from all the islands submit testimony on something that's for Molokai and for Mo'omomi? And I, I think Auntie Davy said a little bit about that because it's this larger thing about CBSFA, but yeah, we have a few people asking that like, so why do all the islands have to give input on this? Hello, Malia. And so, yeah, so as Auntie Davy was saying, um, you know, not only does it make it possible for other islands, but um, there are other areas that are waiting for DLNR to finish Mo'omomi so that they can, they can be next up. They, they're, they've been waiting for a number of years now for us to complete this so that they can protect their areas. And so moving this forward, you know, doesn't just help Molokai, but it also helps our ohana on the other islands. As Auntie Davy said, Lanai has been working on one. We have um, Maui, Hawaii Island. And so all these areas are wanting to, to protect their subsistence gathering from outside commercial interests coming in and, you know, just raping the resources. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I want to mahalo you, Malia, for, you know, providing us this platform to Kuka and mahalo everyone for, you know, signing in um, and, and asking your questions, getting involved and for, um, you know, helping us to uh, protect our resources for the next generation. So important. Uh, so, you know, again, you know, the hearing is going to be, um, on Wednesday, August 19th. Uh, and if you know you support this and other CBSFA um, efforts, you know, to kako, absolutely. And you know, I'll, I'll, and I'll definitely echo what Kanoho is saying. You know, um, I, I love to see our, our family, our Hana, our island come together, um, you know, on this and after this, and you know. Um, malama each other again. So. Mahalo. Mahalo, Dewey, um, to each of you. And um, I'm, I'm going to read this comment um, that Mehana Vaughn is sharing on our Zoom chat. And she said, the Haena CBSFA only passed because so many people in communities across Hawaii took the time to testify and to support. And so mahalo to Mo'omomi for leading the way. And please, she's putting out the kahea, please send in testimony and support and um, share your mana'o, you know, as we were um, sharing earlier. So mahalo again to each of you um, for the work you're doing and for leading this. Um, maybe if our kako'o can put up that last slide. Yeah, there we go. So as we kind of wrap it up, um, maybe we can, you know, we would encourage all of you to share a, a one word takeaway or your mana'o in the chat box. We would love to, um, to review that and take some time. And, you know, if you feel like other Ohana members or other teachers or others in your community need to hear this, please go share the video with them. Um, it is being recorded. It's being shared on all of our partners' um, Facebook pages. And I'm seeing some of those words come in already. They're saying momona, uh, emau. Um, and I'm sure on Facebook we'll be seeing more. Legacy is another word. Lako, onipa'a. Mahalo, that's great. We're loving that. And so we're seeing pono is also another one. So mahalo again, everybody. Um, I'm going to bring up my closing slides. And, you know, next week we're going to be having um, more mo'olelo around Lavai Apono. So I know we're finalizing um, who our speakers are. Um, but before I, I do that uh, final announcement, you know, we encourage all of you to go on to our survey. 
And you can find that at kanayokana.net slash survey. And it takes a few minutes to do it. Um, and we'll share the results with our presenters as well. Um, but we want to know how we can serve you better. What did you think about um, today's presentation? Um, yeah, did you learn something new? If you have other ideas of other uh, shows or episodes that we could host with other communities or practitioners, let us know. If you want to stay connected with us, that would also be a good place to share your email and opt into that. Um, so as I was saying, next uh, next week, Friday at 9 o'clock, we invite you all to come back um, for a continuation of this Mo'olelo. And we're, we'll bring on some other practitioners from other communities. Uh, maybe we'll have someone from Ha'ena sharing about their experience. And then I think we're also hoping for some other community representatives from other communities that are hoping to take this next step as well. Um, I also invite all of you today at um, 12 p.m., every Friday at 12 p.m. actually, uh, after this, you can come back and, and so funny, we're talking about kole. So our show is called Ai Kole, um, and really that refers to the ono of the conversation. You know, so bring your me'ai and ai kole, it's all done, maka olelo Hawaii. And that's a good metaphor, I think. You know, you, we don't need to have the actual kole. Like, you, no matter what you're eating, if it's the white pa kalo that I got yesterday or a little bit opai here and there, that's that ono, that ai kole. And so today, we're, we actually have two, I believe, from Moko Keave that's going to be talking story with Ekela Kani Aupi Okrozier and ai kole kole with each other. Um, so we hope you guys can come back at 12 o'clock and join in to that conversation with Ekela and our friends. Um, let's see. So again, a big mahalo to our ohana from Molokai, from Hui Malama Omoomomi, for our kako'o from the Kua organization. Um, and always a big mahalo to Kanayo Kana, um, to Hawaii Nui Akea, and all our partners who really help make this possible to provide the platform. And again, Share this with all your ohana so we can all be clear and have that clarity that we need um, so that we can kako'o this amazing effort. So aloha nui, everybody. Have a beautiful weekend and come back and we'll see you again.